Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Sunny, your host, and today we are going to start a, a new playlist which is on fast API for AI applications. So uh, mainly we will uh, this will be more focused towards AI applications. We will try to build APIs using fast API, and before that we will also try to understand that what fast API is. So that uh, uh, and and we are like I'm trying to make this more of a beginner friendly so that everyone can um, like start on the same page and uh, if you are someone somewhat advanced user then you can look into the next videos okay but if you are starting for the first time then this uh, definitely you should check this out so uh, we will try to understand first of all what is fast api so let's go ahead so fast api is nothing but it's a modern framework and it's really high performance and uh, uh, like it's mainly web framework which is uh, intended to build apis and it is based out of Python, so it supports uh, Python 3.7 onwards. So uh, that's a quick gist of it. Now let's take an example to understand what uh, these API can do, okay, and what this API is. So we will take an example of, let's say, if we are trying to build a, something like Twitter, right? So what happens into Twitter? That uh, you write a tweet and then you click on post so that it will be visible to others as well and it will also be shown into your timeline okay so while doing this simple operation a lot of thing happens okay the twitter can communicate with its backend that is the server or api that is serving that page um, and then it stores that tweet that you just posted and then it also tries to display it in front in the front page okay or in the web page they have so this is a simple sort simple sorted operation okay and to like you know to support this you need a backend right or a server or some sort of a you can say an api which will support this process okay so that operation has been shown here so let's say if you uh, like open your like timeline or i will let me show you that real quick so so right now as you can see i'm on my uh, Twitter. So if I say I all and this is and if I click and then just post it. So you would see that this my post is visible on my timeline, right? So how it happened? So like whatever I wrote, so that has been sent backend and then it is also being saved as well, right? Whenever I refresh my page, so I can see my previous tweets as well, right? so all these operations require a communication with the backend okay it will not everything will not happen on the front end or the or on the website that has been shown to you okay there is an application running behind the scene which will deal all with this okay it will uh, it will have a database where and it will have a, let's say table for the user like me and then it will store all the tweets and all the operations that i do okay and then that those same things will be communicated to the front end so that it can be displayed like this okay it, so that it can be displayed like this um so in order to do this like the these uh, there are different types of request has been sent to the backend and then it gives you back the uh, responses okay so let's try to understand those so in this next slide like i will just show you that so i'll talk about the crud operations here and uh, and also i will try to compare with the http request okay so like you can see here in the previous diagram there are different kind of http request can be sent to the backend and based on that request type there will be an http response okay of the server to the front end so i will try to uh, explain it with the help of crud operation if you are not aware of crud operation so it simply stands for create read update and delete these are the most common operations that you can see in any sort of database okay so uh, we will talk about this crud operation and we will try to relate it with this http request so let's say if i talk about the creation let's say if you when you create a new post right like for example in tweet so what happens that uh, you create it and then when you click on the post button so a post request is sent that means you are sending some sort of information to the backend and it will be processed at the backend okay so that is called as the post request now let's say if you want to read your previous tweets or timeline so what happens like whenever you open tweet, twitter.com so what happens that you send a get request that means i need this information to be displayed in front so that is your get request like uh, for example i have written here like view all tweets of your profile so that is a kind of a get request because we are not sending some sort of an extra information from your side like for example 
that you did in the first case the next is an update let's say if you have deleted like if you have created a tweet and it is uh, kind of uh, attracting a lot of controversies and then you want to edit that so uh, that could be sent as an update okay that is that request is called as put request okay and then at the end let's say if you that controversy gone more bigger and bigger it has even after your editing of the post then you have decided to edit, delete that so you can send a delete request and it will delete one of your tweets okay and that is doable so uh, so this is just a quick explanation of like what sort of http request can be sent and uh, yeah we will be building this as well like this simple application we will try to build it in uh, using this fast api and then it will be much more clearer okay but before that let's try to also try to understand what are the key features of fast api so the first key feature is that it is a high performance uh, uh, api then it has an automatic documentation as well so like uh, if you want to understand that how your input and output should look like so you can even have that uh, so that that is it's built in in this uh, fast api then it has asynchronous support let's say i mean like if you want to send some soft sort of uh, asynchronous uh, you know asynchronous request that means let's say um, let's say if you want to die, download let's say 100 images okay and while the first image is being downloaded you don't want to wait right you can send the next request to download the next image right so this is kind of a asynchronous behavior that is supported in the uh, fast api that's that makes it much better okay and if you go with the uh, normal synchronous approach let's say if it for example let's say if you're downloading 100 images and it takes one second each for each image so it will take 100 seconds to download 100 images right but let's say if if they while the first image is being downloaded you send the another request so all and then and so on so uh, what will happen you can like uh, accomplish the same task less than the 100 seconds right because uh, um, you can work parallelly right and instead of or instead of waiting to um, like get the entire image and then save it why not to send another request in the meantime so that's kind of an example of asynchronous support that and i i already created a video on asynchronous uh, uh, so you can check that out okay async in python so that is a library that supports this behavior in python next we have a data validation so py fast api also has a inbuilt data validation so let's say so that is supported with the help of pydantic okay that's a library so that supports a data validation it's a really good one and hopefully we will create a video on that as well in a later phase but uh, data validation also available with fast api so that um, it's an inbuilt one and uh, uh, let's say for example if you send some request right to a fast api server and uh, and let's say it is a dictionary format or key value format and let's say if you change later on the keys okay keys uh, let's say do you make it from lowercase to uppercase and so on and if you let's say if a key or if an input it is intended to be an of integer type and you uh, like you send a float value or you send a string value so that dot that sort of validation can be done automatically with the help of fast api so this is another feature of it and we will we will all look into this uh, gradually when we will proceed with this uh, playlist okay and uh, and now let's see a demo of a uh, hello world okay that application that's a quick uh, so that you can see uh, how to build a quick fast api endpoint okay so for this what you can do is let's open a new project okay so i will simply open a vs code and uh, let's say if i create i will open a folder so i'll create a folder anywhere you can create it let's create it in the uh, desktop and then we can create a new folder here let's say uh, hello world demo fast api and we will now open this one yes i trust the author okay so we have this uh, ready let's create a new file here and i will call this as a main.py and then we can have uh, one more file which is uh, going to be requirements so we are going to have the two requirements here that is one is fast api and then the other one is uvcon so 
this both are required okay to serve this fast api application next is in the main.py we will try to add the application here but before that um, let's try to also have some instructions that we need to follow so that we will uh, install these uh, requirements so i will create readme.md which will have all the instructions so i have already created it so let me paste it here so that you guys can go through these step by step and let me visualize that it for you okay so uh, this is a hello world demo where what we will do is we will first of all create a virtual environment this is the step then we will activate the environment and then after that we will upgrade the pip and then install the requirements okay and after that when i have when i have to run the application so i will run using this command okay that is for the development and the other one is for the uh, let's say if you are running it in the prod so it has to be fast api run main.py okay so that is how we are going to uh, these are the main core commands that we are going to follow so let's start building that so let's open the terminal first So first thing first like you should also have the python installed that is mandatory okay uh, so just check if you have python installed otherwise you should install the python so i will check so so my python version is 3.11 okay right now so before that now let's try to create the virtual environment okay and it, at the bottom uh, right it will be asking that whether you should select it as a workspace uh, environment so i will just select it and then uh, once it is done so let's activate the environment quickly once you have activated the environment you should see your terminal will change here it will say dot when that is your virtual environment and then after that just let's quickly upgrade the pip because sometimes the pip that you install is may not be of the uh, latest version so you can just you can run this command okay next after this let's install quickly the requirements yeah that is done so it depends upon your internet uh, like internet connection as well like how much time it should take uh then since we are done with this so now we are ready to run the application but before that let's create the application first so here first thing first like what we will do is we will try to uh, import fast api class so from fast api import fast api and then create an object of this fast api okay that is we will call this app and then and also uh, your uh, your if you have this uh, tab 9 or any ai uh, ai copilot is there then it will automatically also give you some suggestions so let's follow the suggestion let's let's accept that let's understand this code so what we are doing is we are uh, we are using this decorator okay to define this function as a as a kind of a get request okay so whenever we will uh, run our applications uh, and uh, the default route will um, will be pointing to this app uh, this particular uh, function and it will return this message that is welcome to fast api server it's a kind of a hello world message okay and here we are using async a keyword here that is just for to make this uh, application asynchronous okay so um, then after that you can see it's pretty much straightforward right pretty much straightforward uh, message okay or, or a function and now let's if in order to run this what we will do we will simply go to our terminal again and then we will run the next command that is your development or run command okay so you can run either of them but i would suggest let's say if you are in prod environment so you should run this one okay and the dev environment is like you can run this one right now since we are developing this application so let's use this and we will simply say fast api dev and then main.py once you run this application so here it will show you that uh, you are running in development mode okay and then you can check your application at this link okay so let's open that so once you click on that so it will open uh something like this okay so you can see that the outcome here on the on your front end or on one of your browsers and now let's say if i 
I want to check the docs as well that is inbuilt docs so I can click on this and you can see here real quick so we have got the documentation ready so here we have the default uh, one we have one of the uh, endpoints that is root and it is of type get and if I click on this expand this so you will see these are like it will send give you some details so as you can see it does not ex, uh, like accept any parameter so it says no parameter and the response will look something like a a json response okay now let's try to uh, let's click on this try it out so here it is asking you to execute so once you click on execute so you see that it will it has gave you a response as this okay welcome to the api server now let's say since we are running in the dev environment right so we can also on the go we can make the changes so let's say if i make this as a welcome to the fast api server um demo by let's say i keep this name and once i save it and you should see that it has already started restarted the application at the bottom and let me close this and also check the outcome in the in our browser okay so uh, in our browser hopefully it has been changed and let's say let me refresh this once then if i try to run this or try it out again click on execute so you would see that it is saying it has changed here as well right so that is the advantage of running it into dev okay uh, using that particular uh, command that is this fast api dev main.py okay and if you want to switch to uh, production let's say if you are in production now and then you can go with this one so after this if anyone changes the code it will not change the it will not reflect into the outcome okay it will just uh, kind of freeze the existing one okay existing code so that's a quick demo of the uh, hello world fast api in the subsequent lectures we will or in the videos we will see uh, more examples okay we will just first of all try to understand the very basics of the fast api and then we will gradually proceed with the uh, more ai applications okay so that's all for this demo thank you all for watching